Hello and welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday the 1st of September today. Now just to give you a bottom line figure to decide if you want to watch, if you've had BA1 or BA2 Omicron SARS coronavirus 2 infection, that according to the data we're looking at today gives you a 76.8% level of protection against BA5. In other words, this is hard evidence for natural immunity. Now, there's been a reluctance, it appears to me, in the UK and in the United States and in Canada and in Australia and I think in New Zealand as well to talk about how efficacious natural immunity can be. Now, I've no idea why this should be the case, why people don't want to talk about a natural physiological phenomena, but uh, that's just my impression, might be completely wrong. Now, let's look at where this data is from before we get down into the detail. Uh, So New England Journal of Medicine, this is the original paper in the form of a letter, but it does have full uh, backup information here from the Portuguese uh, authors, all in uh, perfect English, (laughs) of course. Right, straight down down to the detail now. Uh, Risk of natural acquired immunity or the rise of natural acquired immunity. Um, yes, it is increasing, and I hope where awareness is going to increase as well. So this is the paper, Risk of BA5 Infection Amongst Persons Exposed to Previous SARS Coronavirus 2 Variants. And as we mentioned in the headline, it does mention BA1 and BA2, but it does talk about other ones as well. So Omicron subvariant BA1 and BA2 displaced BA5 in many countries, as we know. Is this because of greater transmissibility to some extent, perhaps? Is it due to immune escape? to some extent, uh, perhaps. Uh, We know that people that have been vaccinated and have had the natural infection can still get BA5 uh, Omicron infection. Um, The the, the question is, uh, how common is this? And and the answer is not as common as we thought, as we'll we'll see. So Portugal was one of the first countries to be affected by BA5, and it's got very good surveillance. Now, the number in this study is uh, 9.3 million people. Um, Now, That's all the Portuguese residents aged over 12 from the national census from 2021. So basically there's no better data set than this. A research study typically has a few hundred people in if you're lucky. This has got 9.3 million people in it. So it's a pretty good uh, data set. Now I'll just show you this screen here. What they did here is quite clever. They they looked at um, the different time spans when there was different variants. So this was when we had the original uh, Wuhan variant here. Then we had the Alpha variant. Then we had the Delta variant. And then, of course, we had the Omicron variants uh, after that, uh, BA4, BA5 after that. And uh, what they looked at in these times here, about 90% of the infections were caused by the particular variant that we're looking at. So even although they couldn't genomically test every sample, as they did for a long time in Denmark, for example, they knew that uh, the the over 90% of cases were caused by that particular variant in these particular periods of time. And these, of course, are the overall numbers. So early on in the pandemic, we see that there was very low uh, diagnosed uh, infections because, of course, we weren't testing. Uh, And then uh, by the time uh, BA1 came along, there was plenty of testing in Portugal and lots of infections, hence that peak uh, there. So um, quite clever the way the views, the the timing of the infection waves here. Uninfected people on the 1st of June 2022, there was, so the data set there is 5.3 million of people that were uninfected. 57% of the population aged over 12. Now, this was diagnosed with PCR tests and rapid antigen tests to diagnose cases. And and of course, um, we know that cases are always going to be less than infections. So there's probably even more natural immunity around in Portugal than this would uh, indicate. Um, Now, um, presence of undocumented infections among uninfected people groups, of course, (laughs) the authors obviously knew about this. And they estimated it at 29.2% of infections were not notified. And that's based on zero prevalence of SARS coronavirus 2 anti nucleoplasmid immunoglobulin. Now, I think most of us probably know now that the immunoglobulin that we're testing for in the UK, uh, and indeed in most of the, uh, the states, is the spike protein 
uh, immunoglobulin generated by spike protein. And the problem with that is we can't tell whether it's generated by natural infection or by vaccination. But the, the anti-nucleoplasmid uh, immunoglobulin type G can only be generated by natural infection. So in Portugal, they've done a national survey on this. In the UK, if we have done a national survey on this, I'm not aware of the results. It's not in the Office for National Statistics data, which is to me quite difficult uh, to explain, but it's not. So glad to see the testing. So all basically anyone who's got the anti nucleocapsid uh, immunoglobulin type G has had the natural infection. And as we say, that was 29% uh, more than those officially diagnosed. By the way, indicating pretty high levels of testing in Portugal, it has to be said. Portugal has um, been quite uh, vigorous in many parts of the pandemic. Uh, National Coronavirus Disease 2019 Registry. So th this, is, um, this is the registry that they use. All reported cases in the country, regardless of clinical presentation. So this is cases because, remember, it's based on a, a survey. Um, to calculate the risk of BA5 infection after documented infection with past variants, including BA1 and BA2 is what they wanted to look at. Now, and, and we'll see that they included all of the past variants or all the major past variants. Uh, they were able to do this by uh, looking at times when different variants represented more than 90% of isolates. So obviously they can't test all isolates in the country, but if they're testing several thousand and that's 90%, then it's quite reasonable to say that the rest of the country is also probably uh, at a prevalence of 90% for the particular variant during these particular times that we noted here, uh, the, these waves of the, of the pandemic. Uh, to calculate their infection risk during the period of BA5, so if people had infection, what they're looking at, if people had infection here in Wuhan, in Alpha, in Delta, in BA1 or BA2, what was their likelihood of contracting BA5? Very simple question. What is their protection against BA5 is the question. Now, they pulled the data from BA1 and BA2 because of the slow transition between the two. Now, I think this is completely reasonable because they are quite similar anyway. They're both Omicron derivatives. So they pulled the data from BA1, BA2, as we see on this graphic here. So the BA1 or BA2 was counted as a single period. Very, very reasonable thing to do. And the comparator group, of course, was the population that did not have any documented infection before BA5 came along. So they've got, and, and that was about 3.9 million people. So they've got a group of, what was it, I think we said 5.3 million people who uh, had definitely had the infection, uh, 3.9 million people who hadn't. So that is a pretty good, that is a pretty good number. That, that's an excellent, excellent uh, statistical number. Results. So protection, if you've, so if you had the Wuhan variant, you had a 55.7% protection against BA5. If you had the Alpha variant way back in Alpha days, you had a 58.8% protection against being infected with uh, BA5, Omicron BA5. If you'd had the Delta during the Delta period, you had a 64.5% protection against infection with, regardless of symptoms, against infection with uh, Omicron BA5. And if you had BA1 or BA2, uh, you had a 70, that should seven, shouldn't be there. You had a 76.8% uh, protection. So Wuhan still offering, Wuhan strain still offering high levels of protection against being infected with um, the, uh, the BA5. Now this doesn't tell us how great the level of protection against severe illness and death is. Uh, we, we know it's there, but this, we can't comment on that from this study because it simply doesn't tell us. This is the reduced risk of being uh, infected. And of course, the Wuhan, the Wuhan strain was way, way back here, wasn't it? This is 2020. So uh, we can see that the, the immunity here has lasted for quite a long time against being infected with the virus. So they're the figures. These are, you could say that these are the levels of efficacy against protection. We believe from other data that the previous infection also gives risk against protection against severe hospitalization, disease and death. But we can't comment on that because it's simply not given in these figures. But we can say that this is the protection against uh, infection, the efficacy of previous infection against contracting BA5 Omicron.
pretty uh, encouraging results. Here's the original graphic. Uh, that, that's what I've blown up. So that's the 55.7, that's the 58. So I've just blown those up a bit. But you can see that the, the, the um, margin of error are actually quite small on there. So they're confident on this data. Conclusion, we found that previous SARS coronavirus 2 infection had a protective effect against BA5 infection. So there you go, previous infection is protecting. Protection was maximal for previous infection with BA1 or BA2. Let me ask you, why is that not surprising? Well, two reasons. that They're both Omicron, so they've probably got a similar uh, immuno, immunogenerating profile. And also, of course, it's most recent. <laughs> if we just remind ourselves again, obviously, uh, this is more recent, whereas the immunity generated way back in 2020, of course, could well have uh, waned by 2022. Now, the authors are very keen to put this in context. Portugal, more than 98% of the study population completed primary vaccination courses. But this is still completely valid, showing us this level of uh, this high level of efficacy, this high level of efficacy after uh, natural uh, infection and immunity. Because remember, they did this from the nucleopla nucleoplasmid um, antibody which comes from the core of the virus. It's the bit that surrounds the RNA of the virus. Nothing to do with the spike protein. So uh, quite a nice piece of research. Pity we don't have the data at our fingertips uh, to do this from the UK uh, because the Office of National Statistics don't differentiate um, between the natural and the vaccinated uh, induced immunity. Um, so they are, But they are keen to stress that which is correct. Now, direct quotes from the paper. Uh, there is a perception that the protection afforded by previous BA1 or BA2 infection is low. And this is true. We all know someone who's had the infection three times or four times poor people. We all know people like that. But these are the minority. This data is telling us if you look at the actual numerical data, while these cases stand out, and obviously people like to complain about it because they've had the infection several times, not surprisingly, they are the min minority. They're the breakthrough uh, infections. Um, is very low. Given the high number of BA5 infections among persons with previous BA1 or BA2 infections. So what is saying, yes, yes, there is a lot of these people. But that's because there's been so much of, of these infections. These are remarkably high levels of infections. So um, it's not surprising that we know a few, but it doesn't alter the fact that statistically uh, it is the minority. Our data indicate that this perception is perception. This is perception. It's a perception. It's probably a consequence of the large pool of persons with BA1 or BA2 infected uh, than the infection by other subvariants that is not supported by the data. So the impression, this is, this is a good example of where the impression uh, that there's lots and lots of reinfections is not borne out by the data. Impression and data can often give us two different results. And of course, the data is going to be more accurate. The data is objective. The impression is subjective. The data is based on very large sample sizes. Uh, my experience of the three or four people I know who've had the infection two, three or four times is a small uh, sample size. And of course, a self-selecting uh, sample. Uh, breakthrough infections with the BA5 vari uh, subvariant were less likely among persons with a previous SARS coronavirus 2 infection history, especially for BA1 or BA2, of course, because it was more recent and it's a sim more similar virus. Now, how much, how much of the, um, the increased protection from BA5 uh, in people who've had BA1 or BA2 is caused by the fact that it's more recent? And how much is caused by the fact that um, it's a more similar virus, therefore the antibodies and the, the sensitization of the B and T lymphocytes would be more similar? Interesting question. We don't know. I suspect quite a lot of it is the similarity of the antigen that the BA1 and BA2 is quite similar to the BA5, therefore has given us a lot of uh, protection. And that's why, given the high prevalence of BA5 and the huge number of people in our countries that have been exposed to BA5, I'm optimistic that large levels of natural immunity will have been developed in the population. So there we go. Uh, authorities in the UK and uh, United Kingdom. We're not saying you've done anything wrong, of course, uh, but we would like more data on nucleocapsid antibody prevalence, if you please. Now... <laughs> You know, why are we even bothering to make this? It's just so obvious. I mean, I mean, this is, this is my physiology book. 
Now this this is actually quite a good physiology book because it's free. I'll put the link to download it. You can download it free. But I mean, I mean, let me just give you an example here. I mean, th th this is this is just from um, things I've I've written. I've been teaching for ages. Um, adapt adaptive immunity. So you know, we've been teaching adaptive immunity for ages. I'm not quite sure I can get it on. I need to put it sideways. Anyway, we've been teaching adaptive immunity for ages, and uh, we, we've got pages and pages about this in this book here. Um, different cells, cells involved in the, the, the immune response, uh, the, the, the lymphocytes, the B cells, the T cells. We've got pages of this here. Um, and th this is not things I invented, of course. This is just things I've been teaching for a long, long time. So, um, you know, what, what basically what I'm saying is um, natural immunity is not surprising. <laughs> We've got natural immunity to the milieu of uh, other um, viruses and bacteria in our environment, why should this be any different? And this data from Portugal is telling us that it's not different. Uh, natural immunity is good and uh, in my view should be talked about much more. Do download that, read the whole chapter for yourself, um, free downloads as I say, and, uh, and thank you for watching today.